Hello and welcome to another Sibelius lesson. This is part one of a two-part lesson where we'll be exploring the world of advanced time signatures. So, let's dive straight in, shall we? The first thing that I would like to show you, because it's so frequently requested, is how to change the position and size of your time signatures. We can do this in engraving rules. So if we go to engraving rules and click down the bottom on time signatures, here we can choose what textile we would like our scores time signatures to use. So you can see we have a couple of examples here. If I, for example, click on large, then my time signatures in the score only appear up the top of the score, but significantly larger. So the way in which our time signatures appear in the score is really only dictated by the text style that it's using. And what this means is that I can then create my own time signature text style to apply to my score. So in a way, I guess I can customize the way in which my time signatures will appear. And so to do this, all I have to do is to edit my text styles. So I first have to go to text, then edit text styles. I then find time signatures. And just so that I don't ruin an existing text style, I'm going to click on new text style to create a new one based on time signatures. Now for this new text style, and just for the sake of the example, I'm going to make things a little bit interesting. I'm going to make something a little bit unusual. I'm even going to call it time signature unusual. And when I'm done, if I then go back to the engraving rules and then change my time signature style over to the one I just created, so you can see my new text style listed there, there it is in all of its ugly, ugly glory. So obviously I wouldn't advise you to create a time signature that is as ugly as this one. But uh, you can see that there's a lot that can be done here. And in the past, I've had to do a lot of engraving work, which involved, let's say, quite unusually shaped or styled time signatures. So let's now move past aesthetics and talk about functionality. By pressing T, we should be able to open up the time signature window. And down the bottom, by clicking More Options, we can find quite a few handy advanced time signature options. Now you've probably already been to this dialog window before, but it allows us to do some quite powerful little things. We can, for example, enter our time signature with an included pickup bar. Or we can choose whether or not we would like to add a cautionary time signature to the end of a system. Or not, which can also be very helpful. Another very powerful feature in this little window is the beam and rest groups option. Here we can choose how Sibelius should group our beams and rests. For a time signature of 4-4, we can see, for example, that the default is set so that the quavers are grouped in two sets of four quavers. But, if I so desired, I could do something really random. And so, after doing this, if I then add that particular time signature to my score and input some notes, you'll notice that their beams are grouped in the unconventional way that I just specified. And you'll notice that it's possible to be even more specific and group the semiquavers and even the demi-semiquavers differently. So obviously for a time signature like 4-4, you probably won't need this, but for more complicated time signatures, you will likely have to specify how you would like the rhythmic values and beats to be grouped. Now occasionally, in repertoire of the 20th century, you will come across a composite time signature that includes the grouping in the time signature itself. For example, instead of just notating 7 over 8, 
they might notate 3 plus 4 over 8 to specify that particular rhythmic grouping. And this is surprisingly easy to do. In our time signature window, we simply type 3 plus 4 over 8, hit OK, add it to our score. Simple, there it is. And this can even be taken to some ridiculous extremes, if we really want to. Of course, we always have to take things to their extremes. For example, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 over 8. Why not? We then add it to the score, add some notes, and there we have it. Just like a work of art. Sometimes, however, we'll require even more complicated time signatures than this. And unfortunately, in these particular cases, we're going to have to start faking things. For example, in some very rare circumstances, we will require a double denominator. Let's say 3 over 16 plus 2 over 8. Now, first of all, <laughs> the program can't do this, so we're first going to have to work out a time signature that contains the same number of beats as our composite time signature would. So in this case, I guess we would probably use 16 as the common denominator. So 3 plus 4 over 16. So technically, our bar is currently set up rhythmically correct, or it contains the same amount of beats that our theoretical composite time signature would, but we still need to change the appearance of the time signature. So first of all, let's hide our current time signature by selecting it and hitting Control shift h And this is where I'm going to have to add my fake time signature text on top. In the text tab, we should be able to find and add time signature text. When I add that text to my score, I can enter in the time signature that I require. But of course, this text won't be interpreted by Sibelius. It's just for looks. Now, there are a couple of things that you might notice. First of all, the numbers aren't aligned. So I'm just going to have to add some spaces to fix that. But secondly, it might occur to you that having two plus signs is a bit confusing and, well, unattractive. What would of course be better is to have just one plus sign floating in the middle of the two time signatures. But the question is, well, if we only have one, how do we get it in the middle? And for this, we're going to have to change some text parameters. So open up Edit Text Styles, find Time Signatures, click New Text Style. We don't want to change the original. And I'm going to call this New Text Style Time Signatures Fake. And what we're now going to do is change the line spacing. It's currently set at 25% and we want to halve this. So I'm going to set it to 13%. I mean, we can't add in decimal places. So 13% is roughly half of 25%. So if I now create this new time signature text and then go back to my score, I then have to select the time signature that I've entered into the score and I now want to change its text type to my new fake time signature text. And when I do that, you'll see that the text all collapses together because the text lines have been shrunk down to half of their original size and they're now overlapping. And this is actually good because we can now divide everything into three lines. So I'm just going to type it all in again. On the first line, we have our numerators. On the second line, we will just have our plus sign. And on the third line, we have our denominators. And you can see that I still have to add some spaces in between certain areas to get everything aligned in the right way. So it is a little bit fiddly, but it does the job. And there we have it. 3 over 16 plus 2 over 8. Now there's one last thing that I would like to show you for this lesson. What is perhaps more commonplace than these complex time signatures is to see a score switch to a new time signature almost every bar. 
Sometimes scores will pulsate back and forth between two or three time signatures, and if this is the case, this can be a bit tedious to enter into the program. But thankfully, there is a really fantastic plugin to help with this. It can be found in the other category and is appropriately called insert bars with multiple time signatures. It's a powerful, convenient little plugin. In the plugins dialog window, using shorthand, we can add all of the time signatures that we require. For example, three slash four would be a three four bar. Then you hit the space bar to enter the next time signature. I'm going to enter nine over eight and then three over 16. And by using the star sign, I can multiply how many bars I would like to use that time signature for. And then here I can also repeat this pattern as many times as I want. It's a wonderful and practical little tool and it's definitely worth having a play around with. So that's it for our first advanced time signature lesson. I'll see you in the next one.